My name is uh, Dr. Ed McKeever. I work at Lancaster University's Institute for Entrepreneurship and Enterprise Development. Uh, I came to it after a career in small business and uh, uh, economic development with a local authority. Yeah, well, the motivation behind the research was basically uh, seeing seeing a large employer of 3,000 uh, employees in a local community closing down and la leaving a really large void. Um, I was one of the people who were actually lucky enough to leave, uh, if that's the way you like to think about it. And yeah, I really got thinking about the people who were left behind, the people who were uh, picking up the pieces, if you like. And really, that's what got us to think about what were their motivations for staying and what was it they were actually engaged in. So very much in the spirit of Clifford Geertz, we wanted to just go back in and to question yeah, what it was they were doing and what it was they were trying to achieve. Basically, we started to try and write the paper as a social enterprise paper because we saw a lot of social enterprise activity springing up in the community as an attempt to, to fill the void. But really what we started to notice was it was actually established entrepreneurs who were actually doing this outside of their own actual business. So we started to question, maybe it's not so much about social enterprise, it's actually about the relationship of these entrepreneurs with the context in which they're actually running their business. And so really we, we started to then home in on the question, what's the relationship between entrepreneurs and their community in which they're embedded? What's the relationship to place? And to start, we started then to frame it around this more uh, the notion of participating, joining in, and actually leading the community from from within. The data process really began by me going back into the community where I was born, and then actually re-establishing myself after a period of say eight or ten years. And I did that through my own family. But I also did it through the, the lead entrepreneur who was one of the, the, the directors of the company that had closed. And what, what really what it, uh, it snowballed out from there in terms of choosing uh, interesting, articulate people who were actually engaged in aspects of developing the community as well as running their business. So really what we were trying to do was, was get the insight of these people and also triangulate that with other people, for example, the mayor, uh, the town clerk, people from the local, the local council, the local authority. So really it was to try and uh, join in with what was going on. And that actually happened over a period of three waves of quite intensive uh, field research, where I actually stayed in the community. I cycled around on my bike and re-established re my connections with the place well, I, have, I had the accent, so that really helped, and that helped me to embed, and actually, that's when it crossed into participant observation, when I was actually sitting in the pub at the football, just dealing with people that I hadn't seen for quite a while, but really who were very interested in telling this story of, of the rebirth of a community, if you like. I think there's, there's two particularly interesting stories that we draw out. Uh, and one of them comes from one of the participants called Paddy. And really, Paddy worked in England for about, uh, about 20 years, and he returned what he called home, because he was concerned about the level of youth unemployment in the, in the region. So basically what he did was he, he, he went to different uh, cities in the States. He went to Boston, Philadelphia, and New York, and he, he got Irish Americans to buy deserted buildings. And basically what he did was he used the unemployed youth to refurbish these and to act. So they were learning how to plumb and be electricians. But he was also developing a property portfolio, which eventually grew into about 12 million pounds worth of property and gave birth to what's called the Inner City Trust. Another one of the entrepreneurs, what he did was he, yeah, he got a, a group of local golfers together and they took over some deserted dune land. They applied to the government for, for some uh, capital funding but basically what they did was they used the unemployment scheme to actually provide the labor. And the outcome is a, is a golf course which will now host a, a major international tournament and which a famous world renowned golfer offered to buy recently for five million pounds. So we start to see the value that they were trying to create. 
but it really seemed to be not directly related to their own business, which would have been a building company, a hotel, uh, a healthcare center. So they were doing these things independently, but they were also doing these other things that maybe they didn't necessarily have to do, but it seemed to be that this was some way of giving back to the, the local community. Really the way we thought about the outcomes was that it was it was as much about economic, it was about mapping the local community in terms of social and economic resources. It was a it was a marriage of both, and that the outcomes were, were very much framed in that sense. So really it was we we saw 170 jobs being formed, but we also saw small things like a, a chamber of commerce being formed, people coming together to actually uh, create a, a Christmas scene, put a Christmas tree in the village. We saw outcomes of an ATM, a pub and a chemist. So these were aspirations, things that were not in the community that really were, uh, were coming in alongside. And really what we, we noticed was uh, while there was a concern to start or create new businesses, these weren't really uh, framed in a corporate sense. These, this was really about community members starting their own business gaining confidence from participation in these other events and actually taking the community and making it more entrepreneurial. So really starting with a very, very narrow base as Anderson, uh, I think it was in Paradox in the Periphery talked about, this very small base provides a basis on which to, to build even very humble and small shoots of, of beginnings. So really what we found was that, that entrepreneurs both use the community, but the community also uses the entrepreneur. So really what we saw was this, this embedded relationship, this, this partnership. And one of the entrepreneurs actually used the phrase, not losing the run of yourself, not becoming too detached or too carried away from the community in which you operate, and actually bring, uh, using that almost as a, as a lens for, for understanding your own participation. I think it very much applies to peripheral communities. When we were doing our literature review, we were looking at uh, communities in Alaska. We were looking at Johnston and Lyonnaise's work on uh, depleted communities. These depleted communities seem to have a common malaise and they seem to have a certain type of uh, entrepreneur, a certain type of person who's not willing to leave, who recognizes that the social fabric is being undermined and who actually goes and does something about it. Maybe not with an explicit plan, but maybe just drawing on what's available, what's, what's there, what's in place. I think the main implication is that having an entrepreneur in the community is more, does more than just bring the benefits of having a few jobs. The outcomes can be much, much broader, but communities also have to realize that, that entrepreneurs see things in a particular way and very often to allow them to lead and in a, maybe from a, from a policy or from a, a government perspective, it's actually to realize that these people understand the problems from a very grassroots level and really they can be seen often as the brokers who can bring what we call um, a commonly understood problem into the partic particular framework which allows the creation of a solution. So they almost become the brokers or the, the people who can look at it from two perspectives and to blend the social and the economic as it links to that particular place. The example that we had was when an entrepreneur was getting a, an empty response from a civil servant and he actually used the shadow, the shadow of a community to, to influence a decision, a funding decision. So really what civil servants maybe need to to bear in mind is that, that really that these are genuine concerns, these are uh, genuine cases which represent communities. So when, when an entrepreneur knocks on your door with a, with a socially uh, commendable idea, it's actually on behalf of those who he represents or she represents. So really think in terms of who are they representing and who are really the, who are ultimately going to be the beneficiaries. So really what we're trying to do in February is implement maybe an action learning activity which can maybe facilitate 
uh, this conversation within the community because a lot of uh, a lot of our conversations were, were scattered and we put this story together so really what we'd like to do is bring the stakeholder together and maybe spawn another wave of research and maybe development as we have seen in uh, in parts of the states and Canada 